They say death is just another beginning. I always thought that was a stupid saying. Now that I've seen both death and the undead, it's hard to disbelieve much at all. Doubt used to be my go-to answer. Now I have to wonder, if death isn't the end, what was left had a way of trying to show the truth of its emotions. And it seemed to be in a mood. It was like a vengeful child, bent on picking at my most vicious wounds, merely to make me bleed. The vicious child had set its teeth into me that day. I should have been used to such things. Sometimes, for short stretches, I felt as though my life was like everybody else's. I rolled my eyes at that thought. I knew perfectly well that no one's life was what we like to think of as normal, because no one even knew what normal truly was. The world was made up of billions of unique creatures, no one exactly like another. It was what gave the world the quality I appreciated. Nothing quite as expected. That day, though, the abnormality of everything had reached new heights. I wasn't usually a girl who would be thought of as fanciful. My analytical mind could rationalize anything and everything. That changed the second I saw her. It was a cold day for late summer. Despite that, the bookstore's air conditioning remained on. Because of the chill, I wore a long-sleeved shirt under my uniform shirt. I was still frigid. I had been stationed up front that day and was bored out of my mind. I loved some parts of my job. To be behind the register was like slow torture. Repetitious movements, soul-sucking tedium, forced friendliness. It was the worst part of my job. Living in a city that housed several universities meant that the bookstore was busy quite often. The fact it had a coffee shop made the place even more popular. People would come in to study or hang out after class. That day was especially busy because the fall semester was about to begin. I scanned what felt like the thousandth book that day and spoke the same words to the customers. Maybe I should shake it up a little and tell them they could get better prices from an online store. I couldn't say that if I wanted to keep my job. So the same words had to be spoken over and over. Did you find everything you needed? I'd ask with a forced smile. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. Toward the end of the day, my customer shuddered a little when I handed her the receipt. It is cold in here, isn't it? She asked rhetorically, rubbing her hands together as her breath puffed out. I gave as polite a response as possible and moved on to the next customer. It truly had gotten icy, as cold as death. That was when I saw her. Goosebumps rose on my arms. My blood felt like it cooled to a point I couldn't possibly survive. My eyes went so wide, I must have looked deranged. She hadn't changed. Emma was one of those girls that everybody turned to look at, both beautiful and striking. Her dark blonde hair was pulled back from her face in a way that showed her expression, one she'd never worn when I'd known her. Anguish. <laughs>